Surging shipping costs drive shops to desperate measures. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and hello to the live stream viewers who are joining me here for the episode today. What we're going to look at today, a kind of a follow-on from the previous video we looked at, which was global um, shipping, well no, global food reaching 10-year highs according to the FAO. Uh, we're going to look now at, well, what's called containergeddon, a supply crisis supply crisis drives Walmart and rivals to hire their own ships. Now, what we will do, let me just bring up a image here quickly to look at some live shipping data, everyone. Now, I, I love just looking at this map just to, to get an appreciation for the scale of what we're talking about here. Remember when we looked at Ever Given when it was stuck in the Suez Canal, all the ships backing up, you can see all of the resources flowing into and out of Australia here for one. We can also see just how busy China is at the moment. Each one of these green, whoa, there we go. One of the green ones, we'll click on. Come on. A cargo vessel, it's not going to tell us which one. I guess I haven't paid the premium. We'll zoom out here and we can see in the US as well, it's just going nuts. There's the trip. A lot of ships do. And we're going to look at that cost of that ship, that trip in a moment. So let's have a look at this article, everyone. So cont uh, container geddon reminds me of Carmageddon. Probably couldn't even make that game these days anymore. So the flying buttress once gl glided across the oceans, carrying vital commodities like grain to all corners of the world. Now it bears a different treasure. Paw Patrol movie towers, Batmobile Transformers, and Baby Alive Lulu Achu dolls. Now, as a parent, I should know what all of those things are. I, get, I mean, we have the Batmobiles and Transformers, the Lulu Acti Achu dolls. Okay. I guess live and learn, guys. The dry bulk cargo ship, has been drafted into the service of retail giant Walmart, which is chartering its own vessels in an effort to beat the global supply chain disruptions that threaten to torpedo the retail industry's make-or-break holiday season. Now, we're also hearing here in Australia, there's discussions of, well, people striking, of truck drivers striking, and potentially having a calamitous effect on our Christmas period. We've also seen Australia Post. They've stopped delivering parcels or have had to hold delivering parcels because they just can't keep up with the demand. Chartering vessels is just one example of investments we've made to move product as quickly as possible, said Joe Metzger, U.S. Executive Vice President of Supply Chain Operations at Walmart, which has hired a number of vessels this year. Now, I'll be quite honest, I invested in, in charter companies that have ships and rent them out for long periods of time. The aim is to bypass logjam ports and secure scarce ship space at a time when COVID-19, as well as US-China trade reunctions, equipment shortages and extreme weather have exposed the fragility of the global spanning supply lines we use for everything from food and fashion to drinks and diapers. More than 60 container ships carrying clothes, furniture, and electronics worth billions of dollars are stuck outside Los Angeles and Long Beach terminals while, I, while waiting to unload according to the Marine Exchange of South, Southern California. Now let's, let's jump over here and have a look at some of the Freydos shipping data to put it in perspective because it looks like, guys, it looks like it's peaked at the moment so if we jump over here this is the freightos baltic index we can see it's it's come off the top over eleven hundred or eleven thousand dollars in september down to ten thousand and ninety one now if we look at the specifics this i've got to log in to look at the specifics bear with me as i do here we're looking at from china east asia to north american west coast this route here and this is this path here that we can see there's actually a really good youtube video where a uh, well, I think a crew member explains just the process and documents this journey very cold so it peaked at over twenty thousand dollars 
20,500, and now it's heading back down to 16,000. So it's it's trending down, guys, down 6% in the t- in time period. This is all the data they have. Look at what it used to be. Three grand, four grand. We're not talking decades ago. We're talking 2020, December 2020, under four grand to get a container, peaked over 20,000, and it's going down. This is why costs are going up for things, everyone. You can't imagine this isn't going to have a impact your transport cost even if it's a small portion for every good or service is time seven if you don't think that's or time six it's going to make a big difference now here, here's an interesting one going back from the north american west coast back to china that's well used to be 400 that's doubled as well this thousand dollars that they're paying now it seems cheap to us because we were we're anchored at the higher price but that's still gone, gotten gone up too I mean, there you go. And what are we looking at here? This is the east coast of China to the east coast of America, and it's gone down as well. So it looks like shipping may have peaked. Now, if this if this goes back down to normal levels, it's going to take some time. We'll have to see what happens with regards to you know these costs, these food costs, if it really is transitory, everyone. Okay, so let's jump back to this article. Pre-pandemic, it was unusual for more than one ship to be in the waiting lane at the number one U.S. port complex, which handles more than half of all American imports. Other big retailers such as Target, Home Depot, Costco, and Dollar Tree have said they are chartering ships to deal with the pandemic-driven slowdown as sea networks that handle 90% of the world's trade. Or as Steve... Ferraria of shipping consultancy Ocean Audit describes the escalating concern concern Carmageddon, uh, container again Carmageddon. There's a there's a slip from my youth. Let me know in the chat, guys, if you're a fan of Carmageddon. Completely off topic. Probably all be too young. A lot of them. So, U.S. retailers. Traditional lifeline from Asia Asia is freezing up due to resurgence of COVID-19 in countries like Vietnam and Indonesia plus a power supply crunch in China. The supply snarls coincide with booming demand as consumers spend more on goods than going out and the festive shopping uh, frenzy nears. Bert uh, Flickner, Managing Director at Retail Consultancy Strategic Research Group, said at least 20 to 25% of the goods stuck on ships were unlikely to make it onto shelves in time for November 26 Black Friday. Why... We're talking about, oh boy, it's October, isn't it? We're already talking about Black Friday again. What's going on, guys? These years are going too quick. A kickoff for the holiday shopping season, a period when retailers make more than a third of their profits. I mean, just think about that. Just think about that, guys. The biggest chains are taking matters into their own hands. In a typical year, Walmart would have moved those toys from China to Los Angeles in hundreds of 40-foot Cargo boxes stacked like colorful Lego bricks on gigantic container vessels that serve multiple customers. But 2021 is far from typical. Incoming cargo at the port of Los Angeles is up 30% from last year's record levels. Trucks and trains can't remove it fast enough, leading to log jams, says the port's executive director, Jean Siroka, reflecting the surge in consumer demand. It's like taking 10 lanes of freeway traffic and squeezing them into five. Chartered ships that offer valuable cargo space and can sidestep the container terminals pay a critical role in this second pandemic holiday season, particularly for time-sensitive goods like Christmas sweaters that won't sell if they arrive too late. The Flying Buttress, for example, entered Los Angeles waters on August 21. It got stuck in a queue outside the port before it bypassed clogged terminals and unloaded its goods at a separately operated bulk cargo dock nearby on August 31 according to Rivin, Revintive data and shipping records. During the voyage, Walmart circumnavigated the shortage of 40-foot containers typically used for global shipping by switching to bigger 53-foot containers that are almost exclusively used to move goods by truck and train within the United States. Hmm. Other companies are also playing the shipping game, including Home Depot, which said it will creatively work to obtain additional capacity now that's interesting i didn't know those containers were used for trucking the home improvement retailer dodged the los angeles gridlock by sending its greater 
Great Prophet charter ship nearly 125 miles south to the port of San Diego. On the 15th of September, the ship's onboard crane hoisted seven-foot Halloween spell casting witches, Christmas lights, and other holiday decor onto the docks there, said Ocean Audit CEO Freria, who helped shipping customers claw back who helps shipping customers claw back over payments. This is the home stretch. They're doing whatever it takes to win in an overheated market, he said of retailers. So why port size matters? Yet there is a limit to such work workarounds. Great profit moored at a terminal that handles everything from sugar to windmill blades, but can only accommodate a maximum of 500 containers from one to two ships per month, now and the end of the year, said Greg Brucey, the port's maritime business development principal. That's because San Diego, like many other U.S. seaports, doesn't have the towering gantry cranes needed to pluck boxes from massive ships. Rail service is equipped for autos and other specialty cargo, and roads in surrounding commercial and residential areas aren't set up for the fleets of truck needed to whisk thousands of containers to other parts of the country. We have a very unhappy community. <laughs> We'd have a very unhappy community if we have 3,000 boxes coming off a ship, he added. Not all retailers will hire ships to support sales, and other factors could be significant in picking out potential winners and losers. Clothing and accessory retailers have seen their inventories decline, even as sales have accelerated, stoking worries about sellouts, said Jason Miller, Associate Professor of Logistics at Michigan State University Business College. General merchandise retailers like Walmart and Target, on the other hand, have done a better job of keeping inventory in place, so paying 20 grand per container. And we've seen... We've seen that that is uh, coming down. Okay, those 20 grand containers, it's no longer happening all the time. Global supply crunch is proving lucrative opportunities for bulk cargo ship operators, though, and they're cashing in on record spike in container shipping rates that have sent freight costs above 20,000 per box on the biggest line of vessels. Global shipping players, AP Muller and Hubbard Lloyd, a flush with cash from soaring rates. Major lines are putting in every ship we can find. Hapag Lloyd CEO Rolf Harbin-Yan said, several ship shipping sources said other firms were snapping up secondhand container vessels of all sizes. Hong Kong-based Taylor Maritime, which according to shipping databases manage, manages the fly and buttress, did not respond to a request for comment. Dry bulk transporters have a short, win, a short window of time to prepare decks to safely secure and carry cargo boxes. They typically transport commodities in below deck cargo halls. Genco Shipping and Trading is seeking approval for its ship safety certifier to provide some, to prepare some of its own dry bulk vessels to carry containers. Now that's interesting. They're retrofitting these dry bulk vessels for containers. That just shows you how crazy it's going. Genco isn't uh, going all in on container ships, said CEO John Wob Woburn Smith, who called the project opt opportunistic. Well, yeah, it's going to be opportuni opportunistic, of course. Separately, Agribiz giant Cargrill said that it's looking into using some of the dry bulk ships it charters to instead hold containers, if only as a temporary solution to alleviate bottlenecks. So there we have it, everyone. The shipping container surge, and what's, well, how some of these big name companies are dealing with it. Well, let's have a bit of a discussion about this one, guys. So let's see what some of you are saying here. And we'll have a look here. Um, what's this? Sh uh, supermarket trolleys are getting more expensive. This is in line with increased commodity creeps up that have impacted on the average Joe. And we're seeing that, and that's, well, part of that is also to do with this shipping cost, these delays, uh, and having to resort to, well, hiring their own ships and use ports that aren't normally used for this container stuff. And, I mean, you've got to understand, when you, when you dock one of these big ships at one of these ports, you'll often have to get an engineer just to design and check to make sure it can all work. It's, it's, it's quite, you know... Quite an interesting situation that we've found ourselves in. I don't know if it'll last forever. People will find solutions. Ash is asking, will this encourage companies to invest in building their own ports and ships? Maybe it will. Maybe it certainly will encourage people to build their own ports and ships. I mean, that's the ultimate, ultimate vertical integration in the supply chain process, isn't it? 
you know that that's a missing a missing part there. If you've got an asset, you've got your own port, you've got your own ship. Why not? But then you've got all the union problems as well, dealing with ports. Would be good if there were more private ports. Honestly, we want to we want to see competition. We definitely want to see competition. Dexter twenty two thousand is saying inflation is masked somewhat by shrinkflation. Yes, when the net weight of contents is less than it used to be. We're certainly seeing that. Shrinkflation. I think there's a, a meme, and I'll bring it up in Freedom Friday today, you know, with the tiny pack of mints, this, you know, this small, I don't see, you know, my mints cost the same as it does. Yeah, the shrinkflation definitely is a thing. And it's all about psychology, guys. That's what it is. And Stephen, or Stefan is going, it's all these cashed up homeless people living in trending shipping container homes. I'm sure that's definitely having an impact. But you know the biggest thing with the people that want to buy the shipping container homes? They're not recycled. They're not old containers that are repurposed. They're brand new containers. You can't use an old container for a house because you don't know what's been transported in it. You don't know if there's any contaminants in it. And yeah, I mean, you can buy, buy timber pretty cheap too, guys. So, I mean, there we have it, everyone shipping, uh, surging, and some innovative responses from, well, from the uh, large format retail sector. Thank you all for watching this episode of Heiser Says. If you're a fan of the channel and you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. If you want to take part in the discussions that we have in the discussion section of the live stream, you can join us on the Twitch channel or on the YouTube channel to, cre to catch the live streams as I record it. Now, this is a separate Heiser Says live YouTube channel. You can find it in the links below. If you want to support us that little bit extra, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon, sign up for Self Wealth or Stake, use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband, buy our merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Thank you to everyone who joined me and helped keep me company for the live stream this morning. Take care and have a great day.